good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hugo Gagioni. I'm the CTO for the Sony Professional Solutions of America. I'm going to give you a brief presentation, somewhat technical, on IP networking technologies for studio and outside broadcasting uh, applications. The, we have, as you probably know, Sony has created a, an alliance which we call IP Life Production System. It's a special technology that I will describe in more detail during the presentation. As you probably are very much aware, the broadcasting world is facing the difficulties of having to design their technologies to serve multiple purposes inside the production environment. We have the news production, archive, program production, uh, transmission area, which are primarily file-based. The timing and exact arrival times of the content from one location to another is not necessary. It's, everything is done on a best effort type of uh, environment. There's no guaranteed sync uh, uh, requirement. And it's very easy to expand because the broadcasting world utilizes IT technology. We use internet connections. We have IP switching fabrics. Uh, this is especially used in nonlinear editing, in uh, editing environments, color grading environment. And broadcasters like to use COTS, commercial off-the-shelf switches. Now, the other requirement that we have in broadcasting is one for the live environment, for live production. And in this re regard, timing is everything. You want very exact responsiveness when you switch one camera to another camera, another location. Therefore, a, a very quick arrival times, exact timing of the information, and it's very important. Constant latency is extremely important in live production environment. Unfortunately, uh, the system, because it's based on uh, SDI, Serial Digital Interfaces, is very difficult to expand. It has limited capability and it's very costly. Then it would be very nice if we could somehow cover both set of requirements utilizing an internet uh, or ethernet based environment using IP technology. That, that would be the real goal that the broadcasting industry is looking for. We can do that. Uh, and Sony has done extensive research during the last 10 years in the use of a IP transmission technology for real-time operations and file-based operations in the broadcasting environment, uh, but utilizing or emphasizing as much as possible the use of COTS, commercial off-the-shelf IP switching fabrics. And it's not only to do IP transmission, but also it allows us to bring new uh, asset values, such as transmission of 4K, transmission of 8K, and virtualization. We can now deploy, a, for example, video switching over multiple cities, all done in real time using IP technology, which we are demonstrating here in the, in, in the show floor of our exhibit. Also, some new features such as uh, device management and status monitoring is possible to achieve using IP transmission. Um, we have done extensive research, as I said, and uh, we have been participating in a number of standardization groups around the world, SEMT, the Video Service Forum. Uh, we are now also members of AIMS and AMWA. Uh, and we have contributed extensively to uh, the knowledge, the technical information of these organizations. Recently, we uh, register openly the information of the low latency video coding that we have in our systems. Also media transport, how to uh, packetize and send media over IP packets. This is also now an open information inside SEMTI. This is RDD um, 38 and RDD 40. These are two new standards that SEMTI has produced. Um, we have now developed a chip. This is an LSI, a large-scale integration chip, that we are embedding in all of our products, from cameras, uh, CCUs, video switchers, video servers, uh, multi-viewers, 
everywhere in the system, all of the pieces, all of the equipment that you can see here in the show floor now have the capability for interconnection using IP input and output. Also, we are uh, conversing, we are discussing with other partners. I'm going to show you the list of partners because Sony doesn't make everything. Then we need to uh, transfer that knowledge, that information to other companies. Therefore, this system is called NMI, Network Media Interface. That's the technology, and we are openly providing this information to other suppliers of broadcast and production equipment. Um, we have written a lot of white papers, technical papers in, in several magazines. And you, perhaps you may be aware there is a standard called SEMTI 2022-6. Uh, it was uh, formulated a number of years ago by SEMTI for contribution purposes, point to point. And essentially, you take the HDSDI information and you packetize it in IP. Therefore, is a straight, very simple mapping from HDSDI to IP. Audio, video, and metadata is all mingled together and IP packetized and sent, including the auxiliary uh, vertical blanking and the vertical and horizontal vertical blanking. Well, unfortunately, that creates some problems because let's say you want to uh, do some editing or some processing to one of the audio channels. Then you have to demultiplex the entire stream do whatever process you need to do, and remultiplex for transmission. Therefore, it's a, another layer of complexity if we have to deal with 2022-6. Sony developed the network media interface, which uh, essentially we take the video essence, the video payload, and we give them their own packets. We take the audio information, and we give them their own packets, and the metadata information, and we give them separate packets. All of these little vehicles, all of these little packets, now drive on the same highway, on the same single multicast. Therefore, the terminology is very simple. Uh, the different uh, media packets are called datagrams, and the entire bitstream is called multicast. This is a single multicast with several datagrams. This is a very important technology because it can be switched very easily using commercial of the shelf switches. Then the other uh, advantage, advantage or uh, advancement that Sony introduced is uh, the use of a very specialized forward error correction. Let me give you an example. In 2022-5, which is the safety standard for uh, error correction, Imagine you are sending a signal from Los Angeles to Vegas or from a remote truck to here. There are going to be interferences. We are going to lose packets. Therefore, you have to protect those packets. This is what the forward error correction do, it protect and re to recover the packets. The 2022-5, the frame boundaries of that algorithm can, or, or the, the number of packets that that algorithm covers can take place across frame, video frame boundaries. Therefore, that algorithm may be processing IP packets from one frame and IP packets from another frame. Then if you happen to switch by bad luck in the middle, you destroy the, re the recovery of the packets and you get a distortion in the video. Then Sony invented a way to make the algorithm to be frame aware. This is a frame aware forward error correction so that you can easily switch perfectly on, brain, on frame boundaries and you can recover the IP packets. Anyway, uh, there is a ton of information. Uh, also, you may know then when we go to the world of IP, we don't have sync pulses anymore. We have synchronization information using PTP, Precision Time Protocol, which is described in this standard 2059. Sony's NMI technology completely complies with 2059 PTP, Precision Time Protocol. Uh, anyway, a lot of information that you can Google very easily, you can find in the, in, in the web. Uh, let me go a little bit more in detail. 
of what this chip, the NMI network media interface chip can do. We take the, in this case, as an example, I'm taking an SDI signal, an HD. I deserialize the signal from the transmission path, and I create my independent channels, audio channels, video, uh, video channels, metadata channel, and I also have the option to do compression. You can do uncompressed transmission or compressed transmission. Then we do real-time protocol. That's the protocol required to create the IP packets. Um, also, and each one is a separate datagram. It's a separate path. Notice also that the forward error correction is checking those packets against the vertical frame timing in order for the forward error correction to close or open depending on the frame boundary. Then there you see you have your RTP datagrams, the video ones, the audio datagrams, metadata datagrams, and then we put them serially on a single multicast because one single multicast can be switched very easily, I'm going to show you in a minute, on a commercial IP switching fabric. Okay? Therefore, this is how it looks, just like a highway with independent cars traveling one after the other. Uh, this is the Essence datagram. Essence can be video, can be audio, can be metadata, and these are the uh, accepted, uh, worldwide accepted uh, RTP headers, real-time protocol headers that are required to encompass the essence. Then this essence datagram is subsequently repackaged inside the forward error correction datagram. And the number of bytes that we have in the forward error correction fluctuates. If it is uh, correcting in the middle of the frame, we will use all of the IP packets. If we are reaching the end of the frame, we will chop it at the end of the frame. OK. Um, now I'm going to show you how we switch. This is the key advantage of NMI, the network media interface. And this is, in the middle, is an IP switch from any manufacturer. A Juniper, Arista, Cisco, you pick your favorite IP fabric manufacturer. Then let's assume I have two cameras, camera A, camera B, and I have a video switcher. And the operator is going to say, I want to go from camera A to camera B. And you're going to punch in the video switcher. Well, the first thing we need to do, in, well, that camera, that, uh, the camera control unit, the first thing it has to do is to associate every IP packet with an ID of what frame that packet belongs to. Because, there are, for example, a, fr a frame of HD can be about 4,500 packets. Therefore, each one of those IP packets need to know where it came from. Therefore, we send a video information associated with that IP, video, audio, and metadata packet. And then you have a streams going into your, uh, this is a single multicast, port one, port two of your uh, IP switch. Then the operator says, well, I want to switch from camera A to camera B. You punch the signal. Then there is an overlay of intelligence. This is a live system manager that, or network system manager that monitors that desire to switch from one to the other and sends the information to the receiver. Who is the receiver? The video switcher. Then the video switcher issues a command to the IP fabric. IP switches don't understand video. They only understand data. And the only way to switch the IP video switch is using IGMP messages, Internet Group Management Protocol. Then that message goes into the switch, and it says, leave this stream, join the other stream. This is how it works in IT technology. Leave the stream that you are using now, switch to the other one. Then there's an overlap. And the receiving chip in the video switcher will discard the overlapping packets. And that cut is what we call clean video switching. 
and this is produced perfectly using NMI technology, Network Media Interface. Okay. All right. Uh, we can support a number of uh, data rates on depending on the infrastructure that you have. Uh, we, LLBC is the low latency video coding. It's a very sophisticated, very advanced uh, compression algorithm. Very fast. It's less than three milliseconds. Okay, and it's visually completely visually lossless. Therefore. Uh, in the case that you need to put multiple signals on a gigabit fiber, or, it, or you want to comp uh, put multiple 4K signals on a 10 gigabit fiber, we have to use LLBC, low latency video coding. And you can see the range of data rates. We can put up to two 4K signals uh, within one 10 gigabit fiber. All right, uh, because the video switch, the IP switches, different manufacturers have different speeds, different latencies. Some of them are very fast, some are not that fast. But then we have to have some synchronization and buffering inside ch our chips to make sure that the latency from point to point is precisely defined. Therefore, as a, as a design consideration, we guarantee that everything has to be precisely under one frame. Then when you go and see our video switchers, uh, and we are doing actual IP transmission here on the show floor, everything is within one frame of uh, responsiveness. Okay? Uh, we have written uh, business papers, uh, technical white papers, so that you can get much more information uh, similar to what I'm just saying but in more, uh, in more detail. Uh, if you are in need, if you want to obtain those papers, please uh, make, uh, make sure you contact the, your Sony uh, representative. Uh, we have created an alliance. This is the IP Life Alliance. And we have now 49 companies that have very deep knowledge of the NMI technology. I mean, you can recognize some very famous names, uh, Grass Valley, Everts, that uh, have joined this alliance. Some of them are utilizing our chips. Some of them are uh, creating software layers around our chips. And uh, OK, this is the latest count of uh, partners uh, around uh, the NMI technology. We have created a full ecosystem. This is not, this is not a theoretical exercise. This is not paper. This is reality. We have to create full, full ecosystems of IP interconnections. Then we have now our cameras, our servers, our video switchers. We have SDI to IP converters. We have now showing prototypes of audio, video, multiplexers, and uh, multi-viewers. And the list of equipment will continue. Also, very important, live system manager. That's the intelligence that controls the behavior of the IP switching fabric. Um, we, right now, we are using uh, companies such as Juniper, Cisco, uh, Huawei. We interoperate very well with Eberts, Imagine, using uh, the live system manager control. Um, these are some of the products. Uh, the live system manager essentially creates the behavior of a cross-point matrix, like a router, but this time controlling the IP fabric, the IP switch. Uh, also, the Live System Manager interfaces with the command layers from other companies, so that other companies can also control our products. Uh, we have a signal processing chassis, where we can put a number of cards. Uh, one of these cards is the uh, SDI to IP, IP to SDI converter. And notice that we always have two IP ports. One is the main channel. The other one is the backup. In case something happened uh, to the main channel, we have hitless failover. Uh, you will never see the distortion in the image. But we instantly switch from the main network to the secondary network. And this is the connector. This is the new SFP Plus. It's a data connector that can be attached to a metallic 
uh, cabling or optical cabling, one gigabit, 10 gigabit, 40 gigabit cabling. All right, the products that we have today commercially available, this, you can see them here in the show floor, are these ones, the, uh, uh, the 4K camera, the 4300 with its uh, basement processing unit, our uh, state-of-the-art production switcher, the 8000, uh, and also our export server, the PWS uh, 4500, okay? Uh, just to, to give you some idea, the BPU 4500 is the unit that processes the 4K signal from our studio cameras, as well as the high frame rate HD. We can do up to eight times, or 480 frames per second HD over IP, directly from this BPU. Uh, the production switcher can be used in 4K or in HD, and I, I will show you more details in a minute. And this is the... Uh, production server, this server has cap a capability of up to four channels, four ports of 4K, or eight channels of HD, and you can mix and match. Well, uh, the back of this hardware, you can order the IOs, the input and output cards, either with BNC connectors, like we always done in the past, or with IP interfaces. You can actually have one ME of the switcher operating in BNC connections. You can up the other ME could be IP, and the operator will never know the difference of switching between a stream of SDIs and streams of IP packets. This is a very, very unique technology of Sony. At this show, we are introducing prototypes. They will be soon available in the market. Uh, we are showing a, a continuation of our switching, video switching technology. We have now a medium size frame, video switching frame, and a small switcher, all IP enabled. Also, we are showing a, a, an audio video, a, an audio multiplexer and demultiplexer card and also a multi-viewer, software-based multi-viewer. Uh, most of the systems that you see here on the show floor are interconnected using IP, IP interconnection. One specific example that's very important is that one over there. We can have multiple cameras in HD doing a standard frame rate, high frame rate in HD, and our and only camera in the world that can do 4K at 480 frames per second, all interconnected on a ring of 10 gigabit per second using IP storage, IP transmission. Okay. Um, we are showing a demonstration with, uh, with Yamaha, where we have the prototype of the audio, video, uh, moxing and demoxing. And also, I'm going to show you some details of the collaboration that we have with Eberts and other manufacturers. Um, you may know there is a very famous, very important broadcaster in the world is TV Globo in Brazil. And TV Globo uh, is the company that ordered us to make or to help them build the first 4K IP truck in the world. This truck, uh, OB truck, is currently in Rio de Janeiro, ready for the Olympic Games. They are going to be shooting the Olympics in 4K using IP technology from Sony. And uh, uh, this is the truck. It has two 4K video switchers. It has eight cameras of 4, uh, 4K uh, from Sony, 4300. It has uh, three high frame rate 4K cameras. And it has a ton of Cisco routers. Everything is, uh, they have selected Cisco as one of the, the vendors. And the control surface, it happens to be imaging. They, they are very familiar with imaging control and uh, that control surface using our live system manager can control all of our devices. Uh, these are the three families of video switchers that we are introducing here at the show. The small frame and the mid-size frame will be commercially available uh, uh, towards the end of the year, but the top one is available today. And again, you can use them as a, a standard SDI or IP interfaces, that's your choice. And uh, just to give you some idea, 
The top of the line, the 8000, is a 5 ME 4K video switcher or 10 ME high definition switcher uh, with 160 inputs and 48 outputs. Each one of them can be IP. The mid size is a 3 ME in 4K or 6 ME in HD. And the smaller one is 2 ME in 4K, 4 ME in HD. Again, same technology, same signal processing, same interface, NMI, Network Media Interface. Now, as you may know, the standardization activities continue in the world. Uh, there are different formats. Uh, there's some of them are not here yet. The committees are still discussing. But uh, realities and business directions are very, very pressing. Therefore, we have all of our devices uh, built around NMI, Network Media Interface. But we have the capability to interface, for example, with Aspen, which is an IP format from Ebert, and if other formats appear in the future, it's very easy for Sony to convert to whatever the industry accepts in the long haul. But today, we are employing the, the NMI technology. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the audio board. Uh, we support Dante AES67. Uh, we can have up to 64 channels of audio in one single NMI channel. Uh, this card will come later uh, during the year. Uh, we have a technology demo, a prototype here in the show floor. And uh, uh, we have a multi-viewer. It's very clever. Uh, you may know uh, LLBC, low latency video coding, utili utilizes wavelets. And we can use some of the subbands of the wavelet compression to derive lower quality and lower data rate versions of the 4K signal, which are very easy to tr transmit to a large wall of monitors. Therefore, it's a very efficient data transmission to a large set of monitors using LLVC. Uh, in the booth, in the actual NA NAB convention, there are about 16 companies that are using NMI technology to demonstrate different features and functionalities of their products. Uh, we encourage you to visit them and see how NMI is, is used in their systems. And uh, with that, I just want to say thank you. If you have any questions, I'll, I'll be around here. Thank you very much.